When We Were the Kennedys, a memoir from Mexico, Maine, written by Monica Wood in 2012, is not a tribute to the iconic Kennedy family of the Camelot era, but rather a celebration of the power of storytelling. The memoir centers around a pivotal moment in April 1963 when the author's father unexpectedly passes away from a heart attack. This sudden loss plunges nine-year-old Monica Wood and her family into a state of profound grief, disrupting the familiar rhythms of their small town, where fathers worked at the Oxford paper mill. I end this period of private mourning, the Wood family keeps their sorrow contained, feeling isolated from the community. Young Monica seeks solace in stories, including the collective narrative of loss triggered by Kennedy's assassination. The opening pages of the memoir vividly depict the small world of Mexico, Maine, which holds immense significance for Monica and her peers. Despite its seemingly ordinary nature, the routine daily life in the town instills a sense of security and predictability within Monica. Each morning, her mother prepares her father's lunch before he sets off to work at the paper mill. Monica and her two sisters, Kathy and Betty, attend school, with Monica in fourth grade at the local Catholic elementary school. Their three-story apartment building is owned by grumpy Lithuanian immigrants who live on the first floor. Similar scenes unfold across the Irish Catholic town as families of millworkers commence their day Monica hears her downstairs neighbor, Norma Hickey, leave for work like clockwork. Every day follows the expected patterns until the fateful day when Monica's father passes away shortly after leaving the house. Margaret Wood, somewhat prophetic, had foreseen her husband's death in her dreams. However, the foreknowledge does little to alleviate her despair. She is so devastated that her daughters struggle to recognize the strong and capable mother who used to run their household with ease thus. Wood's memoir delves into the themes of loss, resilience, and the role of storytelling in navigating through profound grief. It is a poignant exploration of a family's journey through unexpected tragedy and the ways in which they find solace and strength in their shared narratives. To Monica's relief, her 22-year-old sister and a high school literature teacher rushes home to take charge after their father's passing. Soon after, their older brother Barry, who is married with children and works at the mill, arrives and surprises Monica by openly displaying his emotions, shedding tears as a grown man. Monica's uncle, Father Bob, a figure of authority in the church, adds to the strangeness of the day when she discovers him sobbing in her bedroom. The familiar world she once knew is shattered by her father's death. I and the following days, the Wood household becomes filled with neighbors offering condolences and bringing casseroles. Margaret, Monica's mother, encourages Uncle Bob, still grieving for his dear brother-in-law, to gather himself and preside over the funeral. While Albert Wood, Monica's father, is survived by a colorful cast of relatives living in his native Prince Edward Island, Monica has never met them or visited the island. However, through her father's lively stories about his past, she feels like she knows them. After the funeral, Monica witnesses her father's storybook characters come to life as his Canadian family fills their kitchen. Now, her father becomes the character in their stories. As they share memories of him, Monica realizes that instead of being extinguished, her father's presence continues to grow. Although their family identity has been shaken, the woods carry on as best they can. Monica's mother, unable to bear the emptiness of her bed, roams their small apartment at night but gathers herself each morning to make breakfast and get her daughters ready for school. She finds solace in their room, where she sleeps during the day. After school, their mother wakes up and resumes her role as mom, eventually finding the strength to bake once again. On a day when she prepares to go to the bank to deposit the social security check, she tells her daughters that thanks to FDR, she won't have to scrub floors to support their family. Wood's memoir portrays the Wood family's resilience in the face of loss and their determination to carry on despite their shattered world. It explores the ways in which stories and memories become a lifeline, helping them navigate through the difficult process of grieving and rebuilding their lives. Without a father to join the daily procession of fathers heading to the revered Oxford Mill, the Woods become acutely aware of their perceived peculiarity. Monica, feeling like an oddity among her classmates, spends the rest of the school year repeating to herself, look normal. Look normal. When summer arrives, Monica seeks solace in books, using them more for guidance than mere entertainment. Reading Little Women, she studies how the March family adapts to life without their father. Soon after, Monica discovers the captivating world of Nancy Drew through her downstairs neighbor Norma, 
who generously opens her collection to Monica, the structured events and the unwavering resolution of the red-haired girl detective captivate Monica's imagination. Inspired, Monica begins writing her own detective novel titled The Mystery of the Missing Man Monica's Life takes an exciting turn when she learns that her classmate Denise Valancourt also admires Nancy Drew. Their shared love for the series deepens their friendship. An eventful dinner invitation extended to Denise becomes an adventure as they face the strict opposition of the Lithuanian landlady who barks, no bring friend. Using their sleuth-like skills, Monica and Denise stealthily enter Monica's building. Meanwhile, Father Bob's attempts to be a strong male presence for the family falter. Struggling with anxiety and alcoholism, he ultimately ends up in an institution near Washington, D.C. The Woods plan a visit to him, but their plans are disrupted when President Kennedy is assassinated. Suddenly, their private and isolating grief becomes intertwined with the collective national experience of mourning. Undeterred, they proceed with their trip to the nation's capital, now a center of mourning. Jackie Kennedy's grace and resilience in the face of loss provide solace to Margaret Wood, reflecting her own pain. As Monica reflects in her writing, Jackie's story makes her mother's grief more bearable. Point 11 years later, Margaret loses her battle with cancer, coinciding with the closure of the Oxford Mill due to labor disputes. Monica, now grown, decides to return to Washington to pursue her studies at Georgetown University. The city holds significant meaning for her, encompassing both personal and national memories. When We Were the Kennedys is a poignant memoir that delves into the life of a Mill family and their profound personal tragedy. In a 2015 interview, the author emphasized the importance of a memoir extending beyond one's individual experiences. Wood's memoir accomplishes this by demonstrating how the power of storytelling itself, be it family narratives, mysteries, or national sagas, can imbue the intangible with permanence and transform the unimaginable into reality. Through her young self's journey, Wood illustrates how stories have the remarkable ability to expand our horizons, even when it feels as though they may be diminishing. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.